From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2,129, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, August 22, 2018. The NASA Parker Solar Probe successfully launched on a Delta IV heavy rocket from Florida's Cape Canaveral, August 12, 2018. We welcome now Newsline Science Editor, Dr. Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW. The probe was named after one of the founding fathers of space weather science, Dr. Eugene Parker, who at a young 91 years old was in attendance. Dubbed the mission to touch the sun, the Parker Solar Probe is viewed by many scientists as a miracle mission. It will be the closest we have ever come to the sun at 3.8 million miles. It will fly the fastest we have ever gone at 430,000 miles an hour. It will survive temperatures at 3 million degrees Fahrenheit, the hottest environment we have ever known. Indeed, the corona is hot, even 300 times hotter than the surface of the sun. Data from this region is critical to advancing models of the solar corona and the solar wind, and it will extend scientists' ability to predict the intensity of space weather. The probe's first close pass of the sun will be in November 2018, with 23 ever closer passes over the next seven years. When the probe finally runs out of fuel some 10 to 20 years in the future, it will fall into the sun and burn up, all except for the carbon-based heat shield. Long after the probe is gone, that carbon disk will continue orbiting the sun for many generations to come. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Dr. Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW. In just a few short months, something else will be headed into space. Packet Radio for the International Space Station. It looks like APRS and Packet Radio will be back on board the International Space Station sooner rather than later. NASA has given the go-ahead for the launch of a new packet module to replace the one that died on board the space station in July last year. The module has been outfitted with a new battery and given sufficient testing to verify that it's operational. A request has been made to send it up as part of the Manifest for Supply Mission 71P, which could be sent as early as the 31st of October with a projected docking on November the 2nd. Meanwhile, the RS hardware team have been working on the new interoperable radio system which it now hopes can be deployed in early 2019. As for the packet module, the crew will make an attempt to get that installed as time permits. RS reports that it's expected to be operational again by late November. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Robert Broomhead, VK3DN. If you keep your two-meter rig handy, this low-key special event is for you. At 7 p.m. local time on the 26th of August, turn on your radio and listen to the sound of two-meter FM simplex. Then, key the mic. It's that simple. And that's what Joseph Durnell, NE3R, is hoping hams will do to mark an event he's calling Light Up Two Meters Night. It's an activity that he's reviving after years of dormancy. He told Amateur Radio Newsline he discovered the event 14 or so years ago when it was promoted by a now defunct Yahoo group. Joseph told us, quote, there are no points or awards, just the satisfaction that the QSO was something you made happen on your own, end quote. Weather permitting, he'll be out there operating mobile on a hilltop with a small Yagi on a mast outside his car. But whether you use a handheld to have some rag shoes or you go portable and try it in combination with summits on the air, Joseph says, light up the night. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jim Dameron, N8TMW. Listen for a full report on our Young Ham of the Year presentation from the just-concluded Huntsville Ham Fest in next week's report. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Dr. Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW, Robert Broomhead, VK3DN, Jim Dameron, N8TMW, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team across the globe, I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW. 7-3, we'll see you next time here on Ham Nation.